She's coming on the platform right now. Let's get her up. Anne Marie Waters! Come on! Day, as Jana said, so happy Independence Day. But today will not just be the day the British people voted to leave the EU. Today will go down in history as the day that started the downfall of the tyranny of the European Union in Europe. It was the British who started it. <laughs> I read uh, an article this morning, and it's quite important, I think, for us to mention this. The business secretary, the conservative business secretary, has said that we should keep open borders, even post-Brexit. And this was in an article about how the majority of people in this country want less immigration. That is the Tory business secretary's response. No, the borders are staying open, even post-Brexit. How dare they? How dare they? He said the reason they wanted to keep the borders open is because the companies wanted free movement of labour. 17.4 million people want control of our borders and the company's voices is not louder than ours. We will not give up our country for cheap immigrant labour for fat cats. We will not be ignored. We are 17.4 million people voted to leave and we will leave whether companies like it or not. They can adjust. They can adjust. The BBC took great pleasure this morning in telling us that Airbus is planning to move out of the, Europe, of the UK. They said it was because of Brexit, but it isn't. It's because of incompetent government who two years down the line still can't tell companies what kind of trade arrangements they will have. It's the government. It's incompetent. The EU is obstructive and they are the reason for this. They want this second referendum. They want you to get tired of all this and they want to keep us in and they want to put the final nail in the vote. The final nail in the coffin of your vote. That is what this is all about. It's all about control. You must, must insist on this. You must make this crowd 10 times, 20 times the size. Make sure they know. Make sure they know they're not getting away with this. I said this was the beginning of the end of the European Union, and it is. And other people have said it, but we must vote differently. There's no time for complacency. There's no time for fear about the other party getting in. What's the difference between the two of them anyway? Vote differently. Vote differently. We must do it. We must catch up. Catch up with people in other European countries who in vast numbers are voting against their establishment and giving real patriots a chance. We have to do the same here. I just, a note of caution, we all know, we all know that next year, whatever we get, it won't be what we voted for. We all know that. And just to add a note of caution, even if, even if we got a full Brexit, even if next year we got full control of borders, full control of everything else, we're absolutely out of the European Union, it would still never stop bullying and pushing us around. Switzerland is not in the European Union. And you know a few years ago, the EU threatened to break trade with Switzerland because it had voted in a way they didn't like. They will continue to do the same. They will continue to stick their oar in to every country on this continent. That's why 
We have to think bigger. We have to look at a bigger picture. And we have to catch up with our European neighbours to unite together and bring down the corrupt European Union all together. That is the only future. That is the only way we are ever going to get rid of them. Bring it down all together. Thank you all once again. I say this every time because it's true. You are all heroes. You are all heroes. And to the BBC, uh, loving how big this anti-Brexit march is today. Their headlines are all over about how big this march is. Well, BBC, there was a protest two years ago today, a massive protest, and our side was bigger. Thank you all for coming out.